released just last month, the A53 5G smartphone from Samsung challenges the mid-range status quo once again, not just within the company, but outside of it too. And this time, I'm not gonna mince my words around and keep you in suspense until like the very end of the video. I'm just gonna tell you up front that I like the A53 a lot. It's great, go buy one if you're in the market for one. It's awesome value for money and so on and so forth. And honestly, with devices like these, it makes you question why you need expensive $1,000 wallet busting phones, which get replaced a couple of years later anyway, right? So in this video, we'll be diving deep into the specs and details, looking at camera and video samples, and then talking about the top things I like and dislike about the Samsung A53 5G. So let's do it. After these messages, don't forget to subscribe and like this way. The A53 5G retails for $450, that's $40 less than even its predecessor, which is a great thing. Horsepower comes from an Exynos 1280 chipset, moving away this time from the Snapdragon 750G, and is supplemented by 6GB memory and 128GB of storage, and that's expendable through the microSD card slot. The 53 has a nearly identical, if not the same, Super AMOLED 1280Hz 1080 by 2040 6.5-inch screen from the A52. Punching out 800 nits, it's protected by Gorilla Glass 5 and has an in-display fingerprint sensor set low in the unit right here. The camera array is the same as the A52 as well, consisting of a 64 megapixel f1.8 main unit, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 5 megapixel macro. The selfie unit right here in the punch hole is fronted by a 32 megapixeler, if that's a word. Battery life easily gets you through one and a half days without even breaking a sweat, partly thanks to the mid range chipset paired with a large 5000 mAh battery pack. There's IP67 water resistance as well, while weight is 190 grams. Each corner of the phone is pretty slap sided, especially if you look at it from the side view here, but they do have a slight curvature to them so your palms don't hurt like after two minutes of use. The bezels, as you can see, are mostly inoffensive. It's about three millimeters from the left and the right, four from the top and about six for the bottom chin. The camera island is now more organically blended into the body, less of a Mesa than before. It's really, really nice. And the USB-C port, this was rare. It's not even on my Pixel 6. It's nicely chamfered even in the inside corners here, so it's not sharp. When you hold it against your palm, you don't feel it. The Pixel 6, I can definitely feel it. Uh, the Right here at the bottom, again on the left side, the SIM, I'm not sure if you can see it in this color and this lighting. The SIM and micro SD cards share the same slot. Uh, the downward firing speaker works in tandem with the earpiece at the top here to provide some semblance of stereo audio. There's support for an eSIM as well if you need it. Uh, buttons on the right side are the only thing right here, power button and a volume button right here. They have good action, though a little small and nondescript uh, to find, especially the power button. The back cover as well as the surround are all plastic, but they do offer really good grip. It's a smudge magnet as you can see. I purposely did not clean it so you can see how it looks like, especially in this colorway. The aluminum frame for sure though is really strong with barely any kind of flex and also no creaking at all. And yes guys, there is no Qi charging because, you know, something's gotta give at this price. The camera setup on the A53 is actually identical to the A52. But in this case, the new Exynos chipset is meant to improve image processing and things like info crunching. And I'll tell you what guys, the results speak for themselves. Things like photo details, HDR, low light are much improved nowadays, especially in good lighting. And you'll see in the samples in a second, details are strong, producing the kind of colors and HDRing that people like to post on social media. Uh, there are weak points, especially like night mode, <laughs> it sucks, uh, digital zoom, okay video stabilization, and bokeh that's not very smooth.
Let's see how the stabilization does. The stabilization, the viewfinder in the Google is steady as a rock. Not so much with the Samsung, but the end result, uh, the final video, uh, is what matters really. Coming down to the river, and compared to my last video, you can see there's no more ice or snow. Everything is gone, and I'm really sad. But it does change the the view a lot. It gives you a different view of the Penobscot River. I really like this tree because it gives a nice uh, contrast to the scene. And you can see the color too on the Google on the right side. Uh, it's a little bit pushed more brown and yellow, uh, less realistic than on the Samsung. But here's a weird thing. The sky, we mentioned this earlier, that the Samsung is more realistic. Here is the opposite. So it goes to show that no one's winning this necessarily. It just depends on the scene and how each phone interprets things. Let's see how the sun is handled here. Woo Any lens flaring? Well, it's really purple in the viewfinder anyway on the Samsung. And uh, there is some lens flaring here and there. All right, selfie camera. Let's see which viewfinder stabilizes more. Maybe the Google shakes a little bit more and the uh, Samsung uh, is cropped in a little bit more so that the EIS can do its business. But more importantly, what's the final uh, result like? Let me run. Let's see this. How's the color of the canoe in the background? Let's have a look real quick. Um, it's a little bit, the selfie cam, I'm not too excited about the Samsung. It's a little bit washed out uh, on the, the Google. It's a little bit more pleasing. Although, again, it's pushed a little bit too blue for uh, to match the realistic thing through the sky, for example. Average run times on this thing is strong, especially with regular use, easily getting you past like say one and a half days. So needless to say, if you took this to work and back, this can get you to the end of the day with plenty of juice left, even if you're piggybacking off 5G while commuting, which most of us know usually hits batteries pretty darn hard. But that being said, I noticed that if you push this device, and I'm talking about like say one long gaming session or when I looped a video over Wi-Fi with screen and volume at maximum, the screen on time was just 7 hours 49 minutes. And for your reference, with the same testing conditions, I got like 8 hours 22 minutes on the S21 FE with the more powerful Snapdragon fat 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 and also a smaller battery. What's up with that? Expandable storage, I'll tell you what, is strangely rare on high-end phones, yet it's still found on low to middle tier phones like the 53. It's a weird dichotomy, but hey, it's here and it's awesome to have. Did I already mention how nice the screen is? Yes, it's a treat for your eyes guys with deep and vibrant colors and not to mention that fast refresh rate. Seriously, 120Hz is not something you normally find at this price range. And sure, it's not as bright outdoors as its more expensive cousins, but it's still very usable under say like a mid-afternoon sun. For the price, there's really not much to dislike about the A53. Uh, the few that do stand out are like, well, here's the thing. While the device does run pretty swimmingly and without fuss in most situations, there is stuttery performance, especially when you start pushing it, like in battles in Genshin Impact, you see it, or with certain basic functions like the camera or the camera app. Now, the former is understandable considering the chipset, but the camera thing is really kind of odd. For example, it takes about a second for the app to launch when I launch it from the button here, yeah, I know, we're so spoiled nowadays having to wait a bloody second for the camera to launch, but I mention it anyway because if this were a Snapdragon 400 or 500 series chip, sure, that's expected. But this is a 780 level Exynos, so no excuse for this kind of delay. And this same delay, by the way, is also prevalent again in the camera app, causing you to wait again for like a tick or two between shots or videos, or when switching modes. And Personally, I've missed a few good shots because of these kind of unpredictable pauses. The under-display optical fingerprint sensor is even slower than the S21 FE, let alone the ultrasonic ones on the flagship models. You can check out this demo right here next to the Pixel 6, which lots of people say is slow, 
and you can see what I mean. Within the vast Samsung stable, this stands as a fantastic mid-ranger. It's just done right in so many ways from this fantastic 120Hz display, long battery life, solid performance, good main camera, and also the price. Now, if you do own the A52, I really don't see the need to upgrade until like say maybe the A54. And if you're hyper-focused on the best camera and software experience, may I suggest the Pixel 5a for around the same price. Or if you can swing it, the Pixel 6 for $100 more. So with all that said though, I'm bestowing the Samsung A53 5G a gear score of 8.4 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about how I got there, feel free to comment down below. Well, that's all I got today, guys. And in case you're wondering, this is my climbing room. I haven't shot in here for a long time. I got bummed from my house because we have contractors in there working on our bathrooms and such. So I thought it'd be a nice change. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Please subscribe to this channel if you like what I'm doing. Yeah, be nice. Watch this, subscribe, show your support, share this with your friends and family about this random Asian dude who has no idea what he's doing on YouTube. But anyways, uh, thank you for joining me today. Visit my Patreon page, thumbs up if you like this video as well. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? It starts with you, and if you haven't noticed, we need it more than ever. Yes, I'll see you guys the next time. I love you all very much, and God bless. Peace out.